calling. <laughs> it's also a goal has been in devotion to get through one entire year of reading all eight devotions. And uh, it's going to be a long year. <laughs> Once it's done, they can be posted you know, over again for the day that they fit, but they have to be recorded. And then likewise, they have to be posted somewhere on, like I have blogs and I have websites and YouTube and Made a Cafe, Google Plus, and <laughs> you name it. And uh, the challenge has been to try to keep up with what's already in existence in the ministry that I've been doing on the web. And still at the same time, maintain these devotionals that are beneficial not just to me, but will be in the future to beneficial to other people as well as those that are seeing them now. And though now they're in limited, by the time, oh, say 2013 rolls around, all of the ministries and all the networks have been designed so that at that point in time, the work will be done and it's just a matter of getting the information out, just posting or posting the links because they'll all be on the web and just constantly reinforcing the proclamation, you could say, of the gospel. But it's 2011 right now. <laughs> and there's a whole bunch of devotionals to go through and to share and to learn from and to be made conformable by and to go, I'm getting tired. <laughs> and now I know why the Lord said take a day off. But in today's devotional, as even coffee doesn't seem like it's much of a Praise the Lord, kind of thing. Savior and Savior. <laughs> if you believe it is my hand that has saved you, then you must believe that I am meaning to save you yet more and to keep you in the way that you should go. Even a human rescuer does not save a man from drowning, only to place him in other deep and dangerous waters but rather to place him on dry land and more, there to restore him to animation and health and to see him to his home. From this parable we learn that I, your rescuer, would do, and even more. Is the Lord's hand shortened that it cannot perform and cannot save? My cry on the cross of, it is finished, is my cry of salvation for a whole world. I complete every task committed to me, so trust and be not afraid. You know, I, I love the idea of doing things sometimes with God and, you know, feeling as though I'm participating with His purposes, you know, in not just my life, but in someone else's life and watching them kind of, they get it, you know, and they go, oh, cool, this is neat, you know, and run off with it. And, you know, and then there's lots of times where they don't get it, you know, and I kind of go, I don't know, you know, what do you do? You commit yourself unto the Lord, you share, you wait and pray and let them go the way that the Lord would lead them, you know, and sometimes that's challenging too. But knowing that God will complete the work, whether we do it or not, and having that assurance that we are allowed to participate with him in it gives me great comfort sometimes when I see so much. Like if I look around the world and I see so many people that have just ignored God and gone off their way and they enjoy the world and the distractions that there are. They stay distracted and never become even once remotely, seemingly, interested in the fact that the world is coming to an end or that Jesus is coming again. Or even that they need to prepare for life that is going to exist beyond what they can see, hear, feel, and touch right now. I felt like that from the moment I got saved, I started dying, and that the reality of my life was to prepare me for the world to come. 
I sometimes see some people teaching that a little bit, you know, kind of getting there, but sometimes I think that people get caught up in wanting to make this life all there is. And frankly, if this is all there is, it's not enough to make me happy. How about you? Are you content where you're at? Or will you be satisfied when you awake in his likeness? I know people talk about at the end of the world that they're going to rule and reign with Jesus, you know. Me personally, when we get into the kingdom for a thousand years, I'm going to go find a remote area with a little garden, a tree, maybe a little hill, some grass, some shade, take a couple thousand years off, <laughs> or maybe a couple hundred years off, and rest. And I look forward to that. So if you can't find me in the kingdom, look where nobody else is. It'll be me and Jesus just having a nice, quiet conversation. Kind of like you and I right now. And the Lord. <laughs>